Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Welcome in to another edition of the MTOM podcast, where we are reporting live from the side of the farm field in Iowa. Sounds normal, right? But Darren is shooting video of this combine going by with beans. Of course you've seen beans. You know what this is all about. But here, this Kloss combine is going through. So you know it's going to get loud here real fast. Darren's going to follow it as he goes through. This is what Darren would do if he's shooting video that you're going to see on the show, which I will explain. He follows the combine and then continues on. And we see just how loud, dusty. I already said loud, so I can say noisy. But this is kind of a dance that we do when we're shooting video for market to market. So we're out shooting. Phil Blowbaum today is in Audubon County. Darren and I are here in Jasper County. We we're both shooting today, and I, I kind of thought while I was standing down on the platform, what a better opportunity to explain what it is, how we get some of our video and some of the crazy things we do. Maybe we'll have some other conversations in here and some anecdotes of, of shooting video. But I'm going to take a break for now. But I wanted to see if I could actually do the live stand-up as the combine was going by, and I think I just did it. So let's continue because i got to get Darren on tripod, and I'll pick this up in just a moment. Welcome back to yet another installment of the podcast. We're going to do this in all sorts of sections. So now the combines are away, except there's a combine far, far away over there. This field happens to have two combines in it today, and we are a good, safe distance from it. And there are times we get a little bit closer than maybe makes some people comfortable. I'm looking at you, those who follow safety regulations. Uh, but there's a little trick and it's not with the camera that we're shooting you're seeing in this video here there's Darren um, this camera Darren's gonna show you now is a little GoPro and I like to call it my camera on a stick think of being at a, the state fair where every food is on a stick this is the camera on a stick and what I like to do with it is I will hold it and I will get a close-up view of what's going on and I can kind of move it from near to far but the trick that works the best and what I did today is I was riding on a platform of the combine and I'm going to put this thing in a little bit more and I was shooting from afar like this getting video where I'm at a safe distance. Okay, if Molly, my boss, is watching this, Molly, I consider this much safer if I would happen to bump, lose control and lose this camera into the, say, the front uh, feeder of the combine, it's a lot cheaper and uh, doesn't do as much damage as maybe that camera would do. So that is why I put a camera on a stick. And it gets me good shots. And, and I'm going to show you now, say this shot, this is, uh, this is my blind. I hope it's working. No. I, yeah, go ahead and show that, Darren. This is uh, the camera high up into the air. But what I do is I kind of have a, se a general sense of where it's at, but I have gone to using the phone. This camera is can, can be controlled by my smartphone and I can sit and look at different clips and know if I need to adjust the camera high or low, up, down, or I'm pointed in the wrong direction. So this camera has allowed me to do many different things throughout uh, our time in the field. So we always try to stay out of the way of everyone that's out uh, combining. There's a couple of different ways to do that. One, this shoot today, we knew the farmer in advance. He made contact and said, hey, we're coming. But there's plenty of other days in the middle of the week that I'll send Phil or Darren or in the old days, Steve Carnes, a retired photographer, would just send them out and just say, go find somebody harvesting. And sometimes that was good because we met new people that way. And we thank everybody who we've just kind of showed up at the side of the field like, what is, market to market doing here. Well, you guys seem to be a long way from home. Heard that one a lot. But it's also a good opportunity for us to just say hello, 
Find out if anybody has any thoughts on the show. Find out how yields are doing. Get our own field reports as they were. And that is always what we appreciate when people let us in to their area because it is a very stressful time trying to get that harvest out. You know that winter's coming. You know that the fall weather is changing. And you only have so many days, except here we are in the last throes of September, and it's almost 90 degrees. So, yes, we know that there are challenges each and every way, shape, and form. So let me just see. Is this camera still running? I don't think it is, but I'm going to start it up again. But there's a look at Darren from afar, and he doesn't want to be on camera. So we're at least uh, talk. He says, I got on that side of the camera. But Darren is shooting. And, uh, Darren, why don't you show, uh, I'm just going to narrate a little bit as you continue to go. This is one of our older cameras. And, yeah, does it shoot the greatest picture we have? No, but it's in high definition. And what Darren's doing up on the front is the focus. There is uh, the Nat sound mic, and so he's trying to rack focus and show uh, both near and far uh, what looks good and, and maybe what doesn't. So this is his view as we look around. Now, speaking of his view, go ahead, Darren, and pull back so I can see your viewfinder. Uh, yes, he's looking through the viewfinder right through here, and that's what it would look like. And he can see different shots. But he also gets a look from the side of the camera, but it's kind of hard to shoot on the fly from the side. And what he's doing is recording me here uh, each day as I stop and start this other clip. Because I've been having issues with this. And, oh, hey, look at that. They're dumping on the go. See, that's good producing. Darren has now picked up that uh, they're dumping on the go, so that's an action shot. And he's going to follow the, uh, the catch wagon. Some operations have it, some don't. A lot more have them now than used to, but catch wagons now run into the other combine. Looks like we might have an issue down on the other side of the field, and I, that other combine will continue. These are some long rows, and right now we are in the, I'll call it the probably the flattest portion of this field. It has a nice rolling gentle hill, which is both good and bad. Darren found out earlier just how uh, widespread the, uh, the field really was because he was like, where are you? That, the combine's left. I went in one combine, he went in another, and uh, it was nowhere to be found because we were at the end of these rows. And again, back to the topography, this is some hilly fields around here. We're shooting flat and across, and that looks pretty good right over there. But soon that class combine is going to disappear into the side of the earth and we're not gonna see it. All we're gonna see is the dust for a while. So let's go back and shoot back up over here for a minute, Darren. Uh, you can see these are some rolling hills, and that's always the beauty of everything. They're both good and bad in what they can shoot. Uh, Phil, Blowbomb, and I have had the conversations of he likes the good flat field because he can rack focus, get long shots, he knows where the machine is at. And I said, well, I like the, uh, the hills because they're kind of a surprise. <laughs> Yeah, no, it is a surprise, but it's also a challenge. If you don't have permission to be somewhere, you don't want to just randomly show up. So that is what some of the beauty is of these farm fields. So that uh, just giving you a little behind the scenes. So as Darren shoots across, and I know what he's showing you right now is that bean stubble, and it just looks pretty from here. Now, we have from time to time put a drone up into the air. We haven't done that as much as uh, we would like to, and it's always kind of a work in progress of when we're going to get the drone and put that into operation. As the wind has picked up today, it's a lot harder, and I know many of you have drones and have been showing uh, some of those videos, and you put them on uh, your Instagram channel. Yeah, see, this is meta. This is camera in camera. I was just getting, just making sure I had some cutaways. as. Darren continues to show, maybe he'll just follow that combine. Let's maybe just do that. Um, because really, you know, you've seen me talk. You see me talk each week. Uh, but again, just filling you in about what it is that we do here each and every year, when it's whether it's spring, summer, or fall, 
trying to get different uh, field shots and not recycle the same ones over and over again, even though I know some people think that's all we do is recycle the same shots over and over. But we like to show different uh, brands, not try to have brand loyalty to anybody. It just, sometimes it works out that it's more green or more red or more yellow. It just might be the way the luck is that day of us trying to find harvest when things all line up. So there's so much going on in a field, but yet there's nothing going on in the field. Does that make any sense? So this bean field is just standing here. It is showing, blowing in the breeze just a little bit. And then there's that combine that's just ripping the bean out of the field. So it gets really exciting when that combine comes by. And you're like, what do I shoot? Do I shoot it tight where it's the bean, the beans coming through the head of the combine? Is it the side angle where it's going through the sickle? Is it from the side, from the top, low? Uh, the operator I was with here today was saying how one time, I think it was last year, uh, this field was one of the, there are a lot of their fields were knocked over by the derecho. And somebody was out shooting video and she saw the camera operator and then all of a sudden the camera operator disappeared and the camera operator was laying on the ground to get a good shot. Now that is something we try not to do. We try to at least make some form of eye contact, make some type of connection and just stay out of the way. Um, and so, yeah, sometimes we can't get that, what we would call the cinematic great shot where it would be, um, you know, maybe what you would see in a movie with a big boom camera. And that's what the drones allowed us to do. But now as I continue to talk and you hear the wind, that is another challenge that can be had. So Darren is what's at what we like to call the end of his lens. Do I have that right, Darren? Are you at the ends of your lens? Yes. He's at the end of his lens. So that means he is pushed in, zoomed in as far as he can. And any type of shake, touch, tap, dust of wind will shake the camera a little bit and it just won't look steady. So those compressed shots get to be very difficult to see and uh, maintain, navigate, try to work through. So you have to put something in the front of the camera to take your eye away while you shoot something far away or you just might not be able to shoot that far away shot and you just got to get closer. One of the old photography adages is shoot and move, shoot and move. That's what I tell young photographers all the time. Shoot a wide, a medium, and a tight. So that is a look at some of the areas in the field. Now, we are going to talk to a couple of our producers here at Market to Market who have shot video in the past, still shoot video now, but uh, for some of their stories. And then we'll come back here. I thought I would bring in Peter Tubbs, producer, former EFP, that's our term here in Iowa PBS land. Uh, we are actually in the land where all the cameras are stored, hence the, we'll call it mess and organized cast. It's actually very organized. Uh, these are all the camera gear options that we have uh, available to us. We have the field cam, which I showed you with Darren, uh, that usually is a little heavier, kind of hurts your shoulder, doesn't it? It can if you're not used to it. It's funny how... It doesn't take very many weeks of dragging the thing around where you kind of get used to it. And you feel it when you don't use it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, if there's a gap, yeah, you can tell that, oh, I haven't done this in a couple weeks. Yeah. Then we have the camera that you are on, Peter, and that this is a one, different field cam. And I didn't even talk about that when I recorded uh, in the field earlier. And this is more, this is called a Mark III, it's a Canon Mark III 5D. It is very pretty pictures, but not very good at action. Just, it's, it's built as a still camera first, and the fact that we can shoot video on it is a bonus. So if you just wanna stand in one place and take video of something that's moving around, works really well. As soon as you start moving with the camera, that's where thing, you're kinda of pushing it to places it wasn't designed to go. And I've tried to shoot action video with this, cause I've kept this camera the majority of the last year and gone out and shot uh, just as, Things have changed or popped up and the way we've become more flexible. Uh, this is good for beautiful pictures, maybe even a sunrise, a sunset, uh, a flower, a, a tree. But in terms of here comes the combine, I find the GoPro is a better option if I have to just have 
a non-traditional camera. The GoPro is going to be a lot more forgiving in that kind of situation. So Peter has gone out as a producer on stories and worked with those behind the camera, but you used to shoot video uh, more with this, this EFP camera that we like to call it, which is a what? It's a Sony, right? It's a Sony, yeah. Another. I can't remember the model number off the top of my head. I have to look. It is big, stable. Does it work well for field work? For 90% of the time, it's fantastic. The only time it becomes a problem is when you want to climb into a tractor cab or a combine cab with someone and you have a camera that's like this long on your shoulder and you're trying to sit next to somebody and back up and look over their shoulder and you hit in the back of the cab. And that's where, that's its one big weakness is it's a big cumbersome thing. Again, back to the GoPro, hand right. held, wide angle. Right. But you can tell when we say wide angle that it might look what we call fishbowl, fish eye. It, it kind of gives a little bit of a bow. This camera that you're on uh, today is a little more uh, able to be used in, in the field, really, in, literally in the field. Mm -hmm. um, easier, but it's still not the best in the, in the cab because of the focus issues. So getting into a cab, do you just, when you would shoot, when you'd get sent out to go shoot video, did you just jump into a cab? Okay, first off, the days I got to just go and look for guys working in the field were the best days Why? of the job. Well, first, you're out there by yourself, so you can put whatever you want on the radio, and odds are really high you're going to get lunch in some diner somewhere or at the sale barn or someplace that just tasty, tasty food. But then it, when you stumbled on somebody doing work, whether it's planting your field work in the spring or harvest of some stripe in the fall, you know, you f pull up. You find some place to park that's going to be safe and out of the way, and you know you shoot whatever's going on, and you could just sort of tell, you know, some people would see the truck, see you, pull up, hop out of the cab, wander over, hey, how you doing? You with Market to Market? Yeah, hey, blah blah. You know, we chit chat for a while, and if if someone had the time and the personality to stop and say hello, odds are pretty high you could. Take a spin with them. Do, mm -hmm. a, do a lap of the field or whatever they're, whatever they're doing. If they came to the end of the row and they just gave you a wave and they kept going, they were either in a hurry, which I get, and just not wanting to have a visit, which I also get. So when you pulled up on a field, you sort of let the producer, the guy who's doing the real work, kind of set the tone. And that is good for both ways that you said. I'm appreciative of a farmer who doesn't stop and one that does. I, I totally get because like some people will say, I want nothing to do with this, don't shoot. Occasionally, our, a couple of our guys will say, well, I asked the farmer and he said no. And I'm like, well, they probably didn't 100% understand what we were asking of, we don't want to stop you. We don't want you to do anything that you wouldn't normally do. We're there to capture the action as it's unfolding. Combine goes by, planter goes by. We're not saying, okay, can you stop, rewind, do it again, this time with gusto. We're not directing a major motion picture here. No, no, we just want to kind of follow you around and see, see what you do during your day, during harvest or planting. And you were shooting video for Market to Market before I was involved with the show in your first go around here. What was the reason for shooting all those pictures. Do you remember why we went out and shot harvest and planting and? Well, if we're talking about how, say there's say a plant or a harvest is delayed for weather reasons, we want to show, you know, here's what it was, but it was going slowly. Or yeah, the fields are muddy. Here's a combine struggling through a field. Um, you gotta, if we're gonna talk about something, it's helpful if you can show it. Um, also, we're always kind of constantly building a library so that we have fresh pictures of all this work being done. So when we put it into a feature talking about some part of American agriculture, mm -hmm. we have recent pictures to put in. And it is rolled in to the discussion in some sense of speeding up how long you feel like you're sitting there. Now that we had a producer, a senior producer on this show, it was before my time, but you might have been um, EFP at that mo moment, who wanted no video on top of anything. And he just wanted the two people talking, the, the, the talking heads. And that's fine. And a lot of times that's acceptable for many, many people. Sometimes people don't like that. They want to see 
what color combine or tractor is being used. People can generally listen to one thing and watch another thing and take both of them in at the same time. So if we're talking about what the corn market is doing right now and you're watching somebody harvest, you're still gonna retain the conversation. So mm -hmm. that's something that has evolved over the years. I, I ran into a, a couple of brothers in Oklahoma a few years ago who had said, we used to chart what color the tractors were on the show. We got excited if it was yellow or red or green or whatever it was. And I'm like, that's, that's next double fandom. So you've been challenged. Uh, and it is kind of fun when you, you're cruising along on some county road and you see something that isn't the traditional red or green. Mm -hmm. You really try to get that <laughs> just out of the novelty of it. Like, hey, look, I haven't seen one of these in a while. It's yeah. a gleaner. And, yeah. and actually, Darren and I found one last year and, and shot that. And, and we were with the Kloss yesterday from when we recorded this interview. Uh, so again, just mixing it up because we're not beholden to one color. It just happens to be one has a heck of a lot more market share than the other. True, yeah, it's just, yeah, just trying to not have something that's new and interesting. I'll ask you this, mm -hmm. lastly. Uh, do you like when the video is, you know, the nice flat field, or do you like a little bit of a roll or a challenge? I like a little bit of a roll just because it puts, if you have, you know, tractor here in the foreground and then you have something behind it to, to look at. That's just me. Mm -hmm. Is it a requirement to be offered dinner by any of these crews? No, no, and usually I need to keep moving too because I kind of have a checklist. I like to get the A and B and C. So if I've got an A, I need to move on down the road. And I'm appreciative of the invitations and I'm the same way. It's like, I want to keep moving. You didn't plan for me. I'm not really supposed to take this anyway. I know this food is fantastic. It's not trying to be insulting. It's just, you're on a schedule, we're on a schedule. Right, right. now, if it was like, you know, a Rice Krispie bar that I can eat while I'm driving, yeah, we're all over that. All right. Next time you see Peter, he wants a Rice Krispie bar. Okay. He would take it. Yeah. All right. Thanks for the time. I appreciate it. And uh, if you see us, wave. Thanks, Peter. And that's how we do it. We have some crazy little tricks, tips, behind the scenes, but that's what we always like to do here on the MTOM podcast. If you have any story tips, send them my way market to market at iowapbs.org. You can email me at paul.yeager at iowapbs.org. Well, these semis have got to go. So do we. Be well. Thank you very much for watching or listening, and have fun out there at Harvest this year.